Coming up, we have Alien Airports featuring talking dogs, a film noir action RPG set in a depraved city of sex, gambling and death, and also an interactive novel featuring a really exquisite blend of pixel art and original songs. Hi guys and welcome to another I Love Indies video. Today we're looking at some of the great indies released in the last week of May 2021. To keep up to date with all things indie gaming, please subscribe to the channel and also hit that bell icon to get notifications so that you never miss a video. Weaving Tides is a colourful puzzle adventure featuring rideable carpet dragons, airborne creatures known as weavers that look a lot like giant manta rays with their long ribbon tails. You play as Tass, the last human, on a mission to find your parents. Your foster father's a blue dragon called Killim, who accompanies you on your quest. During the game, you'll travel through Silicon Sands, Spun Forests and the Moth Kingdom, and you'll also meet two other rideable dragons, both with unique abilities and personalities. Controlling your dragon is simple. You're able to dive under the textile landscape, use your ribbon tail to mend broken fabric, connect markers to create shapes, or use your dash to cut thread. You'll often need to pay close attention to the environment for clues to solve some of the puzzles, which start off simple, but later become much more challenging and inventive. The hand-painting zones are similar to dungeons in Zelda games. Solve puzzles, find keys to open doors, loot treasure chests, and face off against foes, albeit through indirect combat. You can stun enemies with your dash and then wrap them up with your tail, and you'll have to be quick with your stitch to overcome the creative textile bosses at the end of each area. In between the dragon riding action, you visit town areas on foot. Here you talk with residents to glean information about where to go next, and you can also buy items and upgrades from the shop. You can even pet and please your dragons through a charming little minigame. On top of the main game, for the artistic and creative players, there's a playground mode where you can freely stitch and create your own digital embroidery. It's not surprising that the game launches this week on the Nintendo Switch alongside the PC, as it really does feel like a classic Nintendo adventure. If you fancy dragon riding in a woven world, give Weaving Tides a try now. Next up we have an airport for aliens currently run by dogs. It's an open world comedy adventure set in a series of airports all run by stock photo dogs. The premise of the game is utterly bizarre, but it works a treat. In an alternative reality, or future, you play as one of the last humans in the universe, and you travel through six transit hubs all with different otherworldly settings, shops and things to do. In each hub, your main goal is to get a boarding pass, collect a red passport, check in, and get to the departure gate for the right time. You also bump into your fiance, Krista, who says hello, and then tells you to meet her at the next airport. Along the way, you'll meet a whole host of wacky canine characters. We've got Photo Dog, who always needs a specific item before letting you collect your passport. We've got Security Dog, who'll sniff out any dangerous items in your inventory. There's a dog who has too many cabinets, a bookworm dog, bribe dog, a dog which sells squeaky meat, and even a bartender dog who sells only the finest toilet water. All of the characters have plenty to say, and many of them offer key items to progress or help you obtain in-game achievements. Plus, and here's a big plus, you can pet any of them at any time using the dedicated pet button. An airport for aliens currently run by dogs, or as the developer calls it, dog airport game, is a wonderfully surreal adventure. With its simplistic low polygon 3D art style and soporific soundtrack, the expansive but somewhat empty airport really does feel dreamlike at times. It's perhaps not a game for everyone, I can imagine some just won't get it, but if you can suspend your disbelief, you're in for a comical tale of long distance relationships, alien languages and lovable talking dogs. The game is available now on the PC via Steam and also Xbox consoles. King of Seas is an action roguelite primarily played from a top-down perspective. You play as one of two characters, both heirs to the throne. The king, your father, has been murdered and you're blamed, so you take refuge amongst pirates as you seek to clear your name. The majority of the game is spent aboard your ship, a meagre sloop to start with as you navigate the treacherous seas and complete quests. You're able to dock at ports to buy supplies, upgrade your ship and speak to the locals. 
The dynamic world is procedurally generated, so expect surprises with each play, whether it's a kraken's tentacle grabbing you from below or a volcano erupting from above. The wind can be your best friend or your worst enemy, and you'll need to manage your sails to survive. One button opens them, another closes them. Combat requires strategy as you attempt to outmaneuver enemy ships and claim their bounty. You fire cannons from both flanks and can equip skills and talents to suit your playstyle. The game is quite slow to get going though, with initial objectives rather rudimentary and the world itself a little empty. However, once you get your sea legs and develop the story, upgrade your ship and discover hidden treasure, sailing the seven seas becomes quite an addictive experience, partly down to the roguelike elements of the game. The graphics are gorgeous, particularly when docking on islands and using the camera zoom feature to bring you close to the action. The music is suitably nautical and the script is full of intrigue and betrayal. King of Seas is available now on the PC and all major consoles. Continuing with the trend of strange but brilliant indie games, we have Pecaminosa, an action RPG about a disgraced detective, Johnny Souza, searching for his missing partner. Yeah, that's me. Uh, no, no, the little one. Oh, don't worry, that's not how my story ended. Neither how it started. At the start of the game, you're woken from your drunken slumber by the ghost of a dead mobster, a chap named Charlie Two Angels, who bribes you to help him cleanse his soul in exchange for information on the whereabouts of your partner. It's an unusual start to a hard-boiled noir detective story, but it certainly hooked me in. The game is played from a top-down perspective, with you taking control of Sousa. The 1940s film noir world is presented through some truly stunning pixel art. Out of all the pixel art games I've played and covered this month, Pekmin Osa might just be the most beautiful. Combat takes place in real time. Initially you have to fist fight, but plenty of weapons become available the more you play. The RPG elements of the game become evident through the levelling up system, known as LIFE, and an acronym for Luck, Intelligence, Force and Endurance. How you spend your LIFE points, which you obtain from completing quests and defeating enemies, is totally up to you and can really alter the gameplay experience. For example, during interactions with non-playable characters, you often have various response choices. Some of these are only available if you've leveled up a certain attribute. It's a simple mechanic, but it really makes conversations more intriguing. Pecaminosa is a Spanish word that translates to the sinful or the guilty, which to me perfectly sums up the characters you meet and the story that unfolds. With its ambivalent protagonist, the wonderful cast of characters, car chases and even a blackjack minigame, this is definitely a mystery you're going to want to solve. It's out now on the PC and all major consoles. I still don't know who I am or who I want to be when I get older Even though I'm older now I don't know what I'm here for but I found out no one knows Everyone just goes with the flow I still don't know who I am Who I want to be when I get older Even though I'm older now I don't know what I'm here for But I found out no one knows Everyone just goes with the flow Best described as an interactive novel, The Longest Road on Earth is a pixel art tale told in four chapters, each from the perspective of a different character. The game is an auditory and visual experience, with the story told through images and songs rather than words. Each chapter focuses on aspects of everyday life, from strolling to work, to learning your first steps, to riding a bicycle. The simple things many of us take for granted, or rarely stop to think about. The chapters are contained within an overarching narrative featuring an elderly crocodile who runs an antique shop. Items from his shop trigger moments from the past featuring the different characters. Without words or any real context, the four stories are solely down to the player's interpretation. And since finishing the game, I've spent a lot of time ruminating on what it all means. It's certainly the sort of game you'll want to talk to others about. The game explores universal themes that we can all relate to, particularly with regards to time and its passing. For better or worse, things change, people grow up and grow apart. The four chapters are tied together by this thematic unity. 
Special mention must go to the soundtrack of the game. The 20 songs that feature were written specifically by Bacoli, who also performs the songs which lyrically link to their textless narrative. And these atmospheric songs are just sublime, many featuring euphonious swirling choruses that, like the story, provide a timeless quality and really get stuck in your head. The game does have some drawbacks. It's a short experience, lasting between 90 minutes to a couple of hours. The player really has very little to do other than move a character left and right and occasionally interact with items. And everything is deliberately slow paced, so expect to spend minutes walking a street or sitting down on a train waiting for your stop. But that is life, and that's what the game captures so well. The Longest Road on Earth is a unique game, a transcendent experience that will stay with you long after the credits roll. Each player will interpret it in different ways, perhaps in relation to their own lives. It's also a prime example of the creativity that comes with indie games and a great showcase for games as art. It's out now on the PC via Steam, but also available on mobile platforms such as iOS and Android, which allows you to take it with you wherever you go. Also out this week we have Boy Beats World, a whimsical rhythm action adventure where you vibe along to the music and attempt to liberate the last living humans. Off and On Again is a puzzle platformer that tells the story of a hero tasked with rebooting time. The game world is created and destroyed during play, with the hero having the ability to turn parts of the world off and on again, hence the title. In point and click adventure Strangeland, you awake in a nightmarish carnival and watch a golden haired woman hurl herself down a bottomless well. A raven tells you it's not the first time this has happened, and so begins a Groundhog Day style narrative of mystery and suspense. There was a golden haired woman who threw herself down a well. She's trying to save you. This is your game to play. You made the rules. You need to find her. And there's also The Company Man, a 2D action platformer where you can hit your crazy co-workers with a keyboard and shoot your evil bosses with emails as you try to fulfil your lifelong quest to be CEO. Next week, The Mighty Goose is on the loose on PC and consoles. It's a super slate run and gun shooter where you play as a bounty hunting goose on a mission to track down an evil galaxy conquering monarch called the Void King. Look out for this one on Saturday the 5th of June. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the Isle of Indies channel and also hit that like button to help feed the algorithm. Until the next video guys, keep loving indies.